Okay, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wildlife Wednesday. It's our after school special edition. Say hi to us in the comments so we can check you out. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, we can see your comments. So say hi. My name is Ryan and I am a botanist at WWF Canada. And a botanist, that means I study plants. So I look at all kinds of different plants and trees. But you know what's cool about plants is when you spend a lot of time around plants, you end up seeing a lot of animals too. So whether that's insects, pollinators, birds, mammals, they all need plants to survive. So you end up seeing a lot of plants too. Uh, animals, that is. And um, you know, I live in a city. I, I live downtown Toronto. I do a lot of my wildlife observations from right out on my balcony. And so right now, one of my favorite, favorite animals are red-tailed hawks. I've seen a few of them just cruising right by the balcony. They sometimes get close enough that I can see their eyes and their beaks and their claws too. And I just love those red-tailed hawks because they remind me that a city is a place for wildlife too. Um, don't forget it. So that's a little bit about me, but today I'm not here alone. I'm with our species expert, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, and I love seeing all these hellos coming in from, from all over the place so far. So this is awesome. We've got people I see uh, saying hello from Mississauga. Mississauga might be the only place so far where someone's identified where they are, but if you want to share where you're, you're, you're calling or joining us from, that'd be great. Say hello, say what your favorite animal is. We want to hear from you. So oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Emily Giles and uh, I'm a wildlife specialist here at WWF. So um, just like Ryan loves plants, I love animals. Um, I studied zoology in school. I actually got to live in the jungle of Borneo for a little while for my master's project. I studied bats um, and uh, I got to see my favorite animal there, which is a gibbon, one of those, um, it's a primate that swings through the trees, has um, amazing acrobatic skills. There was a photo there too of my dog, Jake. Um, so my, my dog and my cat, I have to admit, are my favorite individual animals, but I love all sorts of other, other wildlife and, and wild animals. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and uh, very excited to, to answer your questions today. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a great one. This is a super exciting episode because like I mentioned, it's our after school special. So we know we've got all kinds of, we've got kids, we've got adults, we've got wildlife enthusiasts of all ages tuning in today to learn about wildlife. And so Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit about how we're gonna do things today? Sure. So today we'll be discussing and answering um, some of some of kids' most pressing questions about wildlife. Um, I also have some of my own favorite species that we're going to be learning about. So um, I think they'll they'll be yep there they are they're on screen right now. Um, so for the past week, kids across the country have been submitting questions to us by video. And I have to admit, I've seen some of the questions. I've had a little bit of a sneak peek, and you guys have amazing questions. I think some of you were really trying to, to stump me on these and some of you succeeded. So I'm going to try and, and, and answer those today. Uh, and I think things are going to get get pretty silly and, and pretty wild. Pretty wild indeed. So to make things even a little bit wilder, I have a little game plan for us later. And I'll explain the rules when we get there but what's really important too is we're going to be doing trivia later so everyone watching right now pay very close attention because we're going to be quizzing you and we want to know who knows the most about all this cool stuff that we're going to talk about and also don't forget that i can see you know we've got tons of people interacting with the chat already if you have a question just Put it in there and we, we will be monitoring. We're, we're looking through the chat too and there will be some opportunities for us to answer your questions. So by all means, put those in there. Okay, so um, with all that in mind, why don't we move right ahead to Emily's favorite species? Sure, okay. So I'm gonna chat a little bit about some of my favorite animals. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is, is this guy right here. And I hope that he can be focused okay on the camera. Sometimes a little hard, hard to focus him exactly. 
Um, but this is a ring-tailed, a ring-tailed lemur. It's kind of a, a tongue twister. Um, there, there's a photo of one up on the screen too. So oh, ring-tailed wow. lemurs are primates. So primates just like um, gorillas and, and monkeys. And they can only be found on one island off the coast of Africa. There's only one spot where they live. And it's an island called Madagascar. Mm. Uh, some of you maybe have heard of Madagascar because I know there's also a really great movie called Madagascar that, that stars these ring-tailed lemurs. Um, so probably you've, you've heard a little bit about Madagascar, but it's home to many animals like the lemur that are only found there and nowhere else. Oh, and wow. one thing, one thing I want to point out about the lemur uh, does, of course, have this amazing tail that's that's got rings on it, and that's where it, where it's got its name from. So that's the first animal I wanted to show you. So cool! I heard Emily that the male lemurs will use that tail to sort of waft scents at each other. So instead of wrestling or fighting, they will they'll have like wafting battles. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And you know, we could spend a whole episode just talking about some of these animals. So I'm probably gonna just whip through them quickly, but Let's um, go for I, it. yeah, again, if you guys know stuff about these animals, I wanna, wanna hear from you in the, the chat too. The other animal that um, is another favorite of mine, and I have to admit it's a favorite of mine because I've seen it in the wild. And whenever you've seen an animal in the wild, it becomes a special species for you. So this one is the koala. You know, it's also a favorite animal of mine because it is so adorable. And you can probably hear my, my dog, Jake, crying. I don't know. I think he's he's upset that I'm talking about other animals and not oh. him. He's one of my favorite animals, too. He's a very um, cute animal, too. <laughs> he's a very cute animal, too, Jake. Um, but this one is a very unique animal, too, because it's what's called a marsupial. So marsupial mm. is um, animals like like koalas uh, that have a special adaptation, um, and that's a pouch. So they mm. actually have a pouch in their front where they raise their babies. That's where their their babies are born. They're only very 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 tiny when they're born. For koalas, they're only the size of a jelly bean. So if you can imagine. Oh. A baby animal the size of a jelly bean that's that's what goes and lives in its mother's pouch and grows up and develops there until it's big enough to to then venture outside and spends a little bit of time on the mom's back um we call we call those baby koalas joeys mm -hmm. um and and an interesting point that you'll probably like because you like plants um koalas eat eucalyptus and that's yes. all pretty much that they like to eat so you you probably know eucalyptus, Ryan. It's a beautiful smelling plant. I one time had a candle. I know some people have fragrances, essential oils of eucalyptus. It's um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and actually koalas, because I've I've seen them in the wild and seen them up close. They actually kind of smell a little bit like eucalyptus too, because they eat so much of it and they kind of um, take on that smell, <laughs> which is interesting. Amazing. So next um, time I'll just get a koala instead of getting a candle. Yeah, exactly. It's that easy. <laughs> Right next to the bed. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I like them in the wild, but okay. yeah, you can get a, a, a toy perhaps. Ah, good idea. Um, okay, there's one more animal that I want to share with you before we get to, to some of the questions and, and trivia. And this it's this guy here, another Whoa. animal from Australia, just like koala. This is a kangaroo. So and that it, one's got that pouch too. Yeah, exactly. So just like the koala. Um, it has a little pouch in the front. It's also a marsupial, um, mm -hmm. which means uh, pouch. It's actually the Latin word for pouch. So again, just like the koala, it raises its babies in these pouches. Um, uh, and yeah, and then when they're when they're big enough, they can they can venture outside. Um, and Ryan, do you know that we have a marsupial here in Canada as well? We have one species, even though. That's Right. Yeah, even though most marsupials can be found in Australia and South America, there's one here in Toronto. Do, do you know what that one is? I know it, and I've actually seen it. Maybe some folks in the audience have too. It's a Virginia opossum. Exactly. Yes. Um, so they're only they're only really in southwestern Ontario because um, they they don't like the cold. But um, yeah, I've seen them here in Toronto too. Very um, cool. Yeah, and the neat thing about, about kangaroos, you can see them there in that video, they're the largest animal that can actually move by hopping. So they've got these, these big, huge feet, um, and that helps to, to propel them 
very, very, very fast. They can go um, up to 70 kilometers per hour for, for a short wow. distance. Wow, that's yeah, so that's, fast. That's faster than cars are allowed to drive around the city. So it's it's incredibly fast. So Oh my gosh. Yeah, pretty cool animal. I don't. I think that's faster than I can even go on a bicycle. <laughs> Probably, I would think. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Okay, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing all that, Emily. I learned a ton. Like, I had no idea that um, koalas smell like their favorite plant, eucalyptus. That's uh, <laughs> that is pretty cool news to me, and um, I'm gonna put that in the memory bank. Amazing. <laughs> One of the things that you don't usually learn about in in textbooks. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, so we're going to, we're going to do this game a little bit later. We're going to get to that, but for our next little segment, and this is the best part, we're going to get our questions from our audience, our younger audience members. Very much excited for this. So why don't we go directly to question number one? Great. Why do whales shoot water out of their head? That was from Isaac. <laughs> Amazing question, Isaac. So what do you think, Emily? Why do whales shoot water out of their head? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll try and explain this one as, as simply as I can and as clearly as I can. But the simple answer is that that whales breathe differently than you and I do, um, which makes sense because they live underwater. So when we go underwater, we know that we can't breathe breathe in and out in a normal way, or we, we breathe in all that, that water. So whales have to go to the surface of, of the water to get oxygen and, and push out their carbon dioxide from their lungs. And they actually do this through um, a modified, their nose is actually on the top of their head um, in something called a blowhole. So when they go to the surface, they have to push they have to breathe in and out really, really quickly. So what they do is they quickly push out all of the air that's in their lungs. They've got very, very strong lung muscles and they can push all that air out and it, it actually shoots up sometimes 20, 30 or 40 feet in the air. Wow. And what they're, yeah, it's incredibly high. If you've, if you've been on a boat, you've probably seen this. You can see them from a distance. Um, because that air that they're pushing out is, is actually quite warm, um, you can see it. So it looks like water vapor. Okay, so it's a bit like on a cold day when I'm outside and I breathe, I can sort of see my breath. So it's not actually water, it's kind of like, it's just the condensation. Exactly, yeah. So you're actually just seeing the whale breathe. Um, so actually this morning when I was out for a walk, it was so cold, I could see a lot of people's breaths too. So oh, sort of like it. that. But that was a great question, thanks. Well, there you go, Isaac. Hopefully hopefully that was the answer to your question. So let's. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Our names are Joshan, Christian, and Ashen. Our question is, what is a group of kangaroos called? Uh-huh, a group of kangaroos. That's a, a interesting because we're also, we've been talking about kangaroos so far. Um, so this one is kind of a, a silly word, it's silly, silly from my perspective anyway. It's called a mob. Oh, so, a mob. Hmm. so when I when I think of a mob, I think of like gangsters and you know a, a <laughs> tough group. But that's actually when you see a group of kangaroos, you'd say, "Oh, there goes a mob of kangaroos." Um, so a kangaroo yeah. mob can be you know small, just a, a few individuals, or it can be um, fairly large with with several hundred individuals. And it's it's safer them for them to live in these these mobs or these groups because um, they can communicate with each other and tell each other when there's danger coming. And they do that usually by, by using their, their big feet and stomping on the ground to warn each other that that uh, go or a wild dog or something is approaching and they, they need to stay alert. There you go. A mob of kangaroos. Maybe it has something to do with how they, you know, they like to sort of have sort of little fisticuff battles sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe like, like a mob. Anyway, it's, I always find those words interesting how any group of animals typically has a collective noun like that. You could you could get into those. Uh, it's a, a deep rabbit hole there. It's um, true. <laughs> all right. So why don't we go on to our third question? Hi. My name is Kara. This is my koala and my sloth, Emma. We were in Toronto. I'm wondering how can people in Canada help hurt or endangered species? Bye. 
There you go. Great question from Kara. What do you think, Emily? How can we help? That's a great question. Um, and, you know, of course, for, for Ryan and I, our whole job is to help endangered species. So I'm glad that you've asked this question because I think really just by asking that question that you show that you care and by caring and by using your heart, that's the first step in, in helping endangered species. Because I think the more we know about them, the more we care about them and the more that we'll be inspired to, to take action to help them. Um, so what I would recommend as, as kind of your, your first step, since you've already shown that you, you, you care and you're curious, um, is to find out what animals live near you. What are the animals that are in your neighborhood or in your city? Maybe the animals that live at, in the lake or the, the ocean near you and find out what you can about them. So Ryan, you talked about how there was a red-tailed hawk near your, your balcony and you didn't know that red-tailed hawk lives in Toronto. So just finding out stuff like that is fantastic because um, then you'll, you'll take steps to help them. You also talked about how um, I know I know that you love butterflies and you've got um, plants on your balcony. So when you when you know that you've got those those plants there that help butterflies, you can specifically plant milkweed and things that you know that they they need to, to live and survive. So great question. And, and I'm glad that you asked that very, very, very much uh, in tune with with what we want to do here at World Wildlife Fund. Totally. Yep, I agree with everything you said. And Kara, I would say also just share that that love, that passion, that enthusiasm. It's infectious. You'll spread it to other people, and then uh, you know you'll just be surrounded with a whole bunch of other people who want to help out too. And that's what it's going to take, all of us, right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Talk, talking is important. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Let's move on to our last question for this segment. Oh, the video's on. Is it true that there's such thing as a two-horned narwhal? Okay. Two-horned narwhal. Hmm. Two-horned narwhal. That's a great question. Um, so the answer is yes. There are two tusked narwhals. They they have yeah. tusks, but not horns. Um, but but those narwhals are very very rare. Um, so Ryan and I have a colleague whose name is Brandon and he actually uh, lives in the Arctic and, and studies animals like the narwhal. And he's told me that he's never actually seen one of these um, two tusked narwhals, but he's heard, heard that they exist and heard that they are there because of course other people have seen them. Um, and the reason that they exist is you might know that um, a narwhal's tusk is actually a modified tooth. So it's actually their canine tooth that is modified and, and becomes very, very elongated. So normally it's their left tooth um, that, that actually breaks through and, and becomes a long tooth, but very rarely and sometimes both of those canines will erupt um, and form tusks. So that's when you get a two tusk narwhal. Wow, okay, so I had heard that, you know, narwhals are like the unicorns of the sea. And so a two tusked one would be like a unicorn within a unicorn. <laughs> like yeah. super rare yeah exactly wow. yeah the unicorns okay. are the unicorns i like that <laughs> that is pretty neat okay cool well those questions were amazing love hearing from you young folks out there just so enthusiastic about wildlife in the world and we're going to come back to some more questions in a little moment but for right now we're going to switch gears over to a game that i'm calling 10 wild questions. <laughs> All right. There we go. There we go. So there's our friend the kangaroo hopping past. Okay, so Emily, the way this is going to work, I have a little animal stuffy next to me here. And I would like you to try to guess what this animal is by asking some questions. Okay, it's got to be a yes or no question. So something like, does it swim? Does it fly? Does it have a backbone? Understand? So you can try 10 questions. I'm going to count up and we'll see if you can get the answer. Okay. And are the kids at home allowed to help me if I get stumped? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anyone at home, listen in. Try to picture in your mind as we're going through these things, what kind of a creature could this be? And and give us your best guesses, too. Maybe you'll get there even before Emily does. <laughs> yeah, probably. There's a lot of animals on the planet, so 10 questions. We'll have to go quick. Okay, All right. let's see. 
Okay, so my first question for you, Ryan, is does this animal live in Canada? To live in Canada? No, this, this animal you would not find in Canada, not wild anyway. Okay. Um, my second question, I guess we're up to two now, is I know you love... Well, <laughs> I, I don't want to use technical words. D is this animal, does it have a backbone? Yes. Okay. So vertebrates, I think maybe was the word. Yes, it does yeah. have vertebrae, which we can also say it's a backbone. You know, we're vertebrates. And this animal is also a backboned animal. Yes. Okay. So it's either a mammal, a bird, a reptile, an amphibian, or a fish. We're getting it narrowed right down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does this animal live in water? Um, this animal does spend a good amount of time in the water. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, is this animal? Yeah. Okay. Is this animal a mammal? Yes. Uh, so mammals have fur, right? So this this is a a furry animal. Yes. Yes. It spends a lot of time in water. Okay. And it doesn't live in Canada. Um, does this animal live in Australia? We've been talking about Australia a lot, so I'm going to throw that out there. Okay, yes, it does. It does. I think that was five questions. Five questions. questions. Okay, it lives okay. in Australia, yes. and it likes the water, and it's mammal. Okay, I'm going to see if anyone is helping me. <laughs> Please, because these are... We're, I see oh. some good... So Jacqueline thinks it could be a platypus. I, I don't know if a anybody's hippo. I see guessing a hippo. right away. Okay. Um, I'm All gonna right. take a I'm gonna take the cue from Jacqueline and just go for a platypus, which is a strange a platypus, animal. Eh? So that's gonna be my guess. Oh, <gasps> it is a platypus. Is a platypus. <laughs> Thanks, Jacqueline. That's great. You helped me out on that one. <laughs> so this is a platypus, and what's cool about a platypus? So it is a mammal, even though it has this duck bill, and it's also a marsupial, right? So this one doesn't have a pouch on it, but it does have a pouch, and it lays eggs into the pouch which is such a strange thing for a mammal to do but yeah. it does yeah that's that's a cool cool animal that you've got that was a good a good example amazing amazing okay now we're gonna flip the script so it's my turn i'm gonna guess an animal that you've got okay okay all right so um i think my first question is going to be the mammal question so is this a a fur bearing mammal it is, yes. Okay, okay. It is a mammal. And the Canada question was good too, I think. So I'm going to go with that as well. So is this an animal that I would find wild in Canada? Oh, you're going to, yep. You got it narrowed down. That was your second question. Okay, good. Okay. All right. We've got a lot <laughs> of mammals in Canada, though. There's a good number of them. So um, my next question is going to be, hmm, would I find this animal in Canada's Arctic? Ooh, it's it's not it's not an Arctic species, no. Okay. okay. But I'll give you a hint. It is in the north. North, but not Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that actually maybe gives me a little bit of a guess. There's this area between that's not quite the Arctic, but it's quite north called the Boreal Forest, the Boreal Zone. So I'm thinking that maybe we're we could be in that area. Okay. So all right, just just to narrow things down in case that's where we're at. I'm going to ask, is this a a creature with antlers? No, it does no not have antlers. antlers. That, was a, that was a good guess. Okay. I know where you're going. You saw where <laughs> I was going there. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right. Um, I want to know, is this an animal that eats meat? Is it a carnivore? Yes. It is a carnivorous animal. Okay. A carnivorous animal. From the north, it's a mammal. Okay, I have a few more questions. Um, I want to know, uh, does this mammal, it has fur, I know, because it's a mammal, does it have um, white fur? Not predominantly, nope. Oh, okay, are we getting any guesses in here? Oh, I see Elliot thinks it's a moose. Um, yeah. Sarah thinks it's a pika. Ooh, interesting. But pikas are not carnivorous and neither are moose. They both yeah, eat vegetation. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Emily, this is tough. <laughs> okay, so Arctic. Um, hmm. There's some good good answers coming in. As oh, a... I see. Okay, okay. 
does this animal does it have does it make uh does it have whiskers <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm thinking that this might be like a kitty cat type animal. I'm just going to make a wild guess. I'm putting it out there. Is this a lynx? Oh, man, good guess. What? You caught it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that was there tough. We go. yeah. <laughs> Put me on the spot I'm impressed, there. though. I see. All right. Yeah, we've got a couple of people guessed, guessed lynx. So as soon as you see them coming in on the chat, you know. You know that we're, we're oh my gosh, them. I love a lynx. I love how they've got their the the sort of long fur around their their head and the and the black tips on their ears too. Yeah, they're they're beautiful animals. That was fun. That was a great amazing. Whew, okay, I'm off the hot spot. I'm gonna put it back <laughs> on the kids. All right, so so let's get another question from um, our audience. Great. Hi, my name's Mella. I have birds, and I have a question. So, snakes, how do they hatch their eggs? I know that birds use their beak, but how do snakes do it? Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Great question. And Great question. an animal lover there. Yeah, absolutely. I had birds growing up, too. So, <laughs> yep, I see myself in you. Um so yeah, great question. I think, you know, most of us have seen a bird egg. We know that they're they're hard. They have a hard shell. When you think of um, say a chicken egg, most of us have, have chicken eggs in our, our fridge. So they those eggs are are hard, but snakes' eggs are actually soft. So they're they're actually mm. quite soft and leathery. Um, and snakes have something pretty cool called an egg tooth. So it's actually oh. a tooth that they have when they're born that helps them to crack out of that shell. Um, and they just have it temporarily. That tooth will either fall off or get absorbed a few weeks after they hatch, but um, it's just a special little thing they have to get out of that egg. Wow, that is so cool. I never would have guessed. Okay, so that was a great question. See, sometimes you learn something brand new. Um, just from asking an interesting question like that. So let's go to another question, see if we learn something else brand new. What's up, Canada? It's Milo James, and I have a question for you. Are swordfish born with bills, or do they grow over time? And why do they have them? <laughs> a jump and a click of the heels. <laughs> Love yeah. that. Awesome. And I saw Milo James said hi earlier, so I think you're you're here live today. So oh, hi, Milo question. James. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, so the answer is they, they do, swordfish do have um, bills that it's very, very short when they're born and, and they grow over time. And if anyone has seen a picture of an adult swordfish, they're absolutely incredible. They have a very, very, very long nose and they use that, uh, which we, we call a sword. But it's not actually a sword, although they do use them to hunt. So they don't use them like a like a stabby kind of sword that you'd picture. They actually use them, they just kind of move it back and forth to kind of stun their prey a little bit so that they can Ooh. then eat them. So pretty neat. Wow. Great, great question. Very cool. Okay. Learning stuff all the time. All right. Let's move on to another question. My name's Zidane and is a koala bear really a bear? <laughs> okay. Zidane wants to know, is a koala bear really a bear, Emily? Good question. Um, so the answer to that is no, it's not really a bear, even though we, we call it a koala bear. Probably we call it that because they're so cute, um, but they're not they're not a bear like, like our grizzly bear or brown bear or black bears that we have here in Canada. They're, as, as we mentioned earlier, they're a marsupial, that special kind of um, animal with the pouch. Right, yeah, Australia does it different. They've got all kinds of different sorts of things there. So instead of having bears, they have marsupials that are kind of shaped sort of like bears-ish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have one more question, I believe, from our audience members. With the winter coming, how do Arctic animals survive in the cold temperatures? Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about this coming up. It's starting to get cold and I wonder how I'm going to survive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is this is, again, something that we could spend an entire episode talking about because there's so many unique and wonderful ways that animals are adapted to stay warm and survive because it's 
it is cold up in the Arctic. So um, the, the quickest answer, the shortest answer that I can give you is that a lot of them have amazing, amazing adaptations that allow them to survive the cold. Um, one of them is, say, for example, the Arctic fox. It has a very, very, very thick coat, thick fur coat, um, as well as a big, thick fur, furry tail that they can use to wrap around themselves, and, and they use that to, to keep them warm. Um, when you think about things like uh, narwhal, they have a very thick layer of, of fat or blubber um, that helps helps keep their body warm, keeps that heat inside and, and the cold out. Um, and the other thing that they can do is use behavior to survive. So uh, Arctic animals, um, some of them will either hibernate when it gets really, really cold. So they'll go into a, a deep winter sleep. So polar bears, for example, uh, a female polar bear will actually hibernate while she's giving birth. She, she goes into, into um, a deep sleep, into a little den, uh, and gives birth during that time, has her babies during that time um, so that she can avoid those coldest winter days. Other animals um, actually leave. They, they come south where it's, where it's warmer. So um, think about birds. Our, our birds do that here too. They, they head south, head to where it's a little warmer, where they can find food. Um, so those are just a few examples of, of how our animals well, tongue twister, Arctic animals stay warm. But yeah. that's a great question and one that I could talk about for for a long time. So many different answers there. So depending whether what kind of habitat they're in. You know, it reminds me when you're telling me about the the seal and their blubber, I used to scuba dive in cold water and we would sometimes wear a wetsuit, which is kind of like putting on a seal's skin in a way. It's like a biomimicry adaptation <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> true, very true. All right, cool. Well, th such great questions. It's, it's amazing to hear from all of you folks. You've got those, those wheels are spinning up there. So just keep sending those questions on over and we'll keep answering them. <laughs> yeah, I see lots of questions coming in. I, I have a feeling we're going to have to uh, do a, another episode to answer all of these because there's so many. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so before before we go to trivia, I did see one question that was a pretty good one, and I want to. I think we should address it right here. Okay. Um, somebody further up, I'll see if I can get the name, but while you're answering, wanted to know, what about, what do you think about feeding bread to animals in the city? Good idea? Bad idea? What do you think? So I, I know I've seen a lot of people feed bread to, to ducks and geese in the wintertime. Um, I don't think, like for ducks and geese specifically, it's actually not a good idea. Um, they don't digest that, that bread very well. It, it kind of sits, they have a, a special stomach right here called a, a crop. It just sits there, it's not good for them. Um, and it also encourages them not to do what they're naturally supposed to do, and that's migrate. So they're supposed to go migrate south where there is food for them. Um, and I, I like to keep encouraging those birds to leave and, and, and do that. So I'm in yeah. the camp, don't feed, don't feed bread. No. <laughs> I think I happen to agree, you know, and I, I found that question was from Facebook. It was Carrie Ann Hollywood. I don't know if Carrie Ann is in Hollywood or Carrie Ann's name is Hollywood. That's pretty cool either way. Great question. And yeah, I happen to agree. I think it's best for creatures to eat the things in their habitat. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't need to, to feed them extra. <laughs> yeah. Cause it might not be the right thing like bread. It's yeah. Just not, not, not a good food source for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. So lots of other questions we could get to, but instead I want to flip it over and I want to ask some questions to the audience through trivia. So this is where we got to make sure that everyone has been paying close attention. Um, and we're going to ask some some questions about topics we've been already talking about. So why don't we jump into that trivia time? Awesome. Okay, our first trivia question. See if you can remember where do lemurs live? What part of the world are lemurs from? Ooh, this is a yeah. This is one that I actually said out loud in the beginning. So if you know the answer, uh, type it in the chat box, and we'll we'll see if you guys got the got the answer. I'm yeah. gonna give a hint. It's a very strong hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also a movie that 
has the name of where they live right in the title. Oh, I'm seeing some answers come in already. Sarah says Madagascar. Sarah, another Sarah says Madagascar. Steph says Madagascar. Jacqueline says Madagascar. Clement says Madagascar. Okay, this was maybe too easy because I think <laughs> <laughs> you guys all you got it. You got yeah. it. It was Madagascar. Okay, yeah, yeah. it was Madagascar. <laughs> yep, that wonderful um, island continent, sort of off of uh, off of Africa, there with such amazing specialized um, creatures that live there. Yeah, so many. I would love to go there one day. They've got cool plants in Madagascar too. I gotta <laughs> say. Okay, next question. Koalas and kangaroos are mammals that belong to a special group. And what is that group called? What is the name? So this one I said a few times throughout today's presentation, and we had a couple questions that came up about it too. So um, I think I think this one might also be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fairly easy. Um, a big yeah, hint, yep, is that uh, it's it's another word for pouch. Pouch. Yep. It's a it's a big word, multisyllabic. Oh, <laughs> Steph, I see has an answer. Yeah, marsupials. Kaylee says marsupials. And yeah, we're, I'm getting remarkable consistency in spelling here, which is great. Yeah, I thought we'd get some, some different spelling. Everyone's been listening. Good. Yeah, you got it. That the marsupium is the name of that pouch. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Next time we're going to have to make these questions harder, Ryan, because these <laughs> kids are too smart for us. <laughs> you are a smart, smart audience. Amazing. Okay. Our next question coming up. The narwhal's tusk is a modified what? What is it? What part of the animal? Okay. Mm -hmm. So for this one, there's actually two possible answers. You could say generally what it is, or if you even know the specific thing that I said, then we'll take that answer too. So there's a couple of options that you could put here for your answer. Oh, and someone has answered with an emoji, which I love. <laughs> yeah. you well, can I avoid... emojis too. <laughs> wow. Okay. Karen. Karen has a very specific answer. Canine tooth. Oh my gosh. Emily, same thing. Canine tooth. This yep. is amazing. These folks have got it. They're listening. Everyone's listening. Great. There we go. Smart, <laughs> smart people. Yeah, that's right. And we talked about how some, you know, because we've got canine teeth too, and one and two, and <laughs> some people, uh, some narwhals, that is, um, it, both of their canines grow out, and then and then they are double, a double tusk narwhal. Mm -hmm. Okay, our last question. What does a baby snake use to help it hatch out of its egg? Yeah, following up on that, that great question about birds, saying we know how birds do it, but how do snakes do it? So um, snakes and other animals have this, this adaptation too. It's not just in snakes, but it is a special thing that, that helps them. I helps think them. if I remember correctly, maybe even a platypus has one of these to crack out of the egg. Oh, potentially. I, I don't know the answer to that, Ryan, but... Um, Potentially. Okay, I'm seeing the answers come in. People are saying egg tooth. And uh, in fact, I believe that that is the right Yay. answer. <laughs> Got a tooth, tooth theme today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're on those teeth. Amazing. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of our trivia. Um, you all did so, so, so well. Um, it's it's always a pleasure to be in the presence of an audience that is paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Smart kids. So, you know, that is uh, that is going to be it for this episode of Wildlife oh, no. Wednesday. I'm I know. Already. It's coming to an end. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in and for, for participating with us, for sending us your, your messages in the chat. It was a wonderful time. <laughs> Yeah, this was so much fun. I, I loved answering all your questions uh, and hearing those were fantastic videos. Um, and don't worry if we didn't get to your question today, if we didn't get time to answer your episode, Ryan and I are going to be addressing all of the questions later on in, in another video that's going to be uploaded to YouTube next week. Um, and I also wanted to say, if you if you like these little guys, um, you can get them on our website too at, at www.ca. So yeah. They're pretty cute, I gotta say. Pretty cute. Um and and very fuzzy. Even the ones <laughs> like this beluga that I don't I don't think would be fuzzy in real life, but I like that it's fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still very fuzzy. 
And um, don't forget, too, that we've got one more Wildlife Wednesday coming up in um, this calendar year. That's going to be on December 16th. So just come back to whatever platform you're on. Come back on December 16th. And there will be another episode. And the topic is a mystery. We don't Ooh. know. You'll you'll have to tune in to find out. Um, so um, I believe that's all. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. This was so much fun. And uh, I hope that you guys had as much fun as we did today. So we'll see you on the next next time that Ryan and I get to do this. Absolutely.